Hi, I'm Lawrence Cornfield. Welcome to another edition of Building San Francisco, Stay Safe. Today, we're gonna to talk about fire safety after an earthquake. We're here at the Spur Urban Center on Mission Street here in San Francisco where there's this wonderful display, a little house built here in the, in the uh, Urban Center's uh, exhibition area that shows what it is like in a home in San Francisco after an earthquake. And one of the major issues that we're gonna face after earthquakes are fire hazards. And we're so happy to have my old friend Tom Harvey, the fire marshal joining us today. Nice so, to see you again, Lawrence. It's a pleasure, and you know, people talk about earthquakes and fires together. The great 1906 San Francisco earthquake really was a fire that devastated most of the city. Uh, how do we avoid that kind of problem uh, in a small, small home by home area? How can we reduce fire hazards? Well, I think the construction is a lot different than it was in 1906, 106 years ago. So we don't expect that giant conflagration like we had then. Uh, one thing is the gas meters. We want to make sure that the gas is shut off should you smell a leak. You don't want to shut it off if you don't smell a leak. If you shut it off, you're going to have no hot water, no heat, no way to cook. So be careful not to shut it off unless you smell gas. Absolutely, because once you do shut it off, then you really should have a utility company come by and check your entire gas piping system before turning it back on. So here's our little mock-up of a gas meter on the side of our little mock-up house. Mm -hmm. Where do we usually find a gas meter, Tom? It would usually be in the garage. Everyone should be familiar with where their gas meter is and know how to shut off the gas should they need to. And one of the necessary tools is some kind of a wrench to shut it off, a crescent wrench or some other wrench that fits on the little valve. Yes, the, the crescent wrench is good and that this is a perfect example of having it in a tied up there so you can just loosen it up and use it when you need it. Okay, let's go inside and talk about fire safety inside the house. Many of the issues here relate to fire. Um, for example, we have a little smoke detector and I see you brought one here, a smoke and carbon monoxide detector. Tell us about how important this is and why we need it. This is a combination uh, smoke and carbon monoxide detector. And the carbon monoxide detectors are required in all single family homes now and by January 1st in apartment buildings. And if a gas appliance is not burning properly, this will alert you before uh, the fumes build up and may affect you negatively. And this is a battery uh, backup or battery powered? This is a battery powered and it has a 10 year life on the battery. So it's, uh, it works for 10 years and then it's time to replace it. And it, this works for the smoke detector and carbon monoxide. Uh, a lot of times you may have one or the other. So if you put in just a carbon monoxide detector, you should still have a smoke detector. Also important to have a fire extinguisher in your home, I believe. Yeah, every house should have a fire extinguisher, yes. One of the things people expect to do when their power goes out, which is likely to happen after an earthquake, is to either use flashlights or candles. What should we be worried about with open flames and candles? Well, if you can use a battery operated candle and you have those, those are better to use and safer. This kind of a candle, you wouldn't want to have it in an area where it could just sit like this uh, by, and possibly catch something on fire, or if there's a- Aftershock, maybe? Aftershock, there yeah. we go. If there's an aftershock, that it doesn't tip over and maybe right. roll off. So I see you have a chimney or a glass to have it in, but you definitely want to have this on a non-combustible surface right. and somewhere that's stable so you don't have to worry about it tipping over. And then here we have our stove. Now, after an earthquake, a significant earthquake, we expect that we may have gas disrupted. And so without gas in your home, how are you gonna cook? Well, I wouldn't recommend cooking inside the house if you're not using a stove and it hasn't been turned off. So you'll have to go outside and use either a portable stove or something else. So it wouldn't be safe to use your fireplace to cook? Not after an earthquake, uh, for cooking or heating. You should have it checked by a professional first. Here we are outside. 
This should be a safe place to cook outside as long as you're away from the door or windows where you might get combustible uh, fumes inside the building or, or noxious fumes. Yeah, I think that would be fine. Here we have a little cooking setup. What are some alternative ways of cooking, would you think? Well, you have barbecues, your regular barbecue, and once again, keep it away from the doorway so you don't get carbon monoxide in. Or if you have a regular propane barbecue, just make sure you turn off the tank after use. So thank you so much for joining us today, Fire Marshal. Really appreciate it. You're welcome. And thanks to Spur for letting us use this terrific uh, set that they have in their uh, exhibition space. And thank you for joining us here for Building San Francisco Stay Safe. Join us again for another edition of Stay Safe, and we'll see you soon.